Hey guys, come on in for a little Minnesota Twins baseball. It is uh, season number four, games 105 through 107. We are facing the Kansas City Royals in a home series. As we uh, begin to close out the month of July and approach the trade deadline, and we do have some trade deadline news here for you, and finally we've been alluding to it for quite a while, but Will Myers has been traded to the Texas Rangers in exchange for Delino DeShields Jr., uh, starting pitcher Brad Hickman, and left fielder Mark Kirby. So Delino DeShields Jr. is a major league player. Mark Kirby has seen some time with the Rangers at the big league club. Brad Hickman has yet to see time, but is on the verge. And uh, let's go over each of these players. Uh, we had Will Myers for almost one full season if you count the end of last year and uh, the start of this year and he had his ups and downs but we just couldn't pay him the money that he was going to demand at the end of this season it appeared to be about 13 million a year and he was making six right now let's take a look at Delino Sh De Shields Jr. he is only 26 years old it seems like he's been around a lot longer than that uh, three and a third years in major league service so far does not have the greatest contact and power hitting numbers ratings, but he is very clutch, which we like. He is an adequate fielder, and he adds a lot of speed to our ball club, as well as some versatility, uh, playing all outfield positions and second base. Mark Kirby, a left fielder, is just 21 years old. Has seen the big leagues for a little bit of time up with the Rangers. I remember, seems like he played uh, at least once when uh, we played the Rangers. He has very good contact numbers against right. His numbers against lefties are improving. And uh, pretty good power as well. And uh, so we're excited to see him improve. He's a 74 overall right now on the verge of making it back to the big leagues. And so he'll add some organizational depth. Brad Hickman, a starting pitcher as well, is just 21 years old. And he is a 74 overall. Uh, nothing really stands out with him. He doesn't have um, overall great velocity, uh, adequate break. But uh, basically with him, we just are trying to add some organizational depth. We didn't really get any like future superstars in this trade, just some organizational depth, some players that were maybe a little bit closer to the major league level than we have in some of the other trades that we have pulled off so far in this trade deadline period. So let's get to some baseball. We come in at 40 and 64. The Royals at 52 and 49. Again, we're the only team in the American League Central that has a losing record. And the way the Royals are winning is their pitching numbers are not great, but they are second in baseball in, bat in team batting average. So they are getting a lot of runners on base. They have some speed. They move around the base as well. And they get hits with runners in scoring position. And that is why they have a winning record. They're 52 and 49. We're 40 and 64 as we head into this game number 105 of the regular season here in season number four of our Twins franchise. Mike Miner will take the hill for the Royals, a 3.72 ERA. And we're going to go with Jose Barrios, who uh, has become the ace of our staff here in season number four. He wasn't with the big league club in season number one, came up in September call ups, uh, came up. I think midway through our year number two and has stuck with the big league club and is starting to assert himself as our leader of our pitching staff. And here you see him get a strikeout against the Rangers. And in the middle of two, we have no score here at Target Field. Third inning action now. This is Greg Doyle, the Kansas City shortstop, looking for home run number 100. He sits at 99. Ball gets away from the catcher, Cervelli, and the runner is going to get down to second. And that is Alex Gordon on the base pass. Here's another pitch to Doyle, and he's going to line it into center field. And that will drive the runner home from second. That was Alex Gordon. He will score easily. And the Royals jump out to a 1-0 lead early in this game. 
Middle of the third, Royals one run on three hits. The Twins no runs on two hits. We go to the fourth inning now. Here is Delino DeShields Jr. making his Minnesota Twins debut with runners on the corners and Delino DeShields drives it to right center field. But the catch is made by Charlie Christian. Runner tagging will come home and score. Delino DeShields with an RBI sack fly in his first Minnesota Twins at bat. Fifth inning. Here is the aforementioned center fielder for the Royals, Charlie Christian. And we're a little bit jealous of Kansas City and Charlie Christian as he hits that one past Byron Buxton who took a horrible angle. That one gets past him, gets to the wall. Runs are going to score two of them. And the Royals jump out to a 3-1 lead. It's a triple for Charlie Christian. And like I was saying, we're a little bit jealous of the Royals. Charlie Christian, they acquired him from the Detroit Tigers. He's a young outfielder that is putting up numbers that we had hoped that Byron Buxton would put up and just hasn't yet. Here is a fly ball to left field, bottom of the fifth inning with two outs. And Jace Peterson flies out to Alex Gordon out in left. At the end of five innings, the Royals lead 3-1. to one, And we move on to the sixth. Sixth inning with Cole Calhoun at the plate. Jose Barrio still pitching. Calhoun drives this one deep to right field. That one's heading back towards the wall. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to leave the yard. Home run for Cole Calhoun. And it is now 5-1. to one. That's a two-run blast for Calhoun. And the Royals lengthen their lead out to four. That'll be the end of the day for Jose Barrios. A stand good comes in. Only pitched six in a third inning so far this year. Has not given up a single run. And he is dominant against left-handers. He gets Alex Gordon to swing and miss there. Greg Doyle the next batter. We leave Stan Good in to face the righty, Doyle. And Doyle swings and misses at the changeup. So a couple of strikeouts in a row. And we just got to note how well Stan Good is pitching for us since he's been... He uh, pitched for us earlier in the season, then got hurt. Spent most of the year on the IL. Had a little rehab stint in AAA and now is back. And he has uh, pitched really well. So hopefully we can keep him in the next season. And things go well with him there. Seventh inning now. A base hit up the middle is going to drive in another run for the Royals. They lengthen their lead out to 6-1. to one. RBI by Nicholas Castellanos. And the Royals go on to win 6-1. to one. They lead the season series nine games to five. And they are currently in third place in the American League Central at 53-49. and 49. That is, what, five and a half games behind the White Sox for second. The White Sox do hold down a wild card spot. So the Royals are still in the race. And the Indians are 53 and 51, and you see we are the only team with a losing record in the American League Central. Last season, we were the only team with a winning record in the American League Central, so the tables have turned. And game number 106, we have Joe Nelson going against Jose De Leon, and the Twins get the win 6 to 3. Miguel Sano went 3 for 3, including home run number 29 on the season. And he drove in three runs. He's your player of the game in this. Second game of this three-game series, a 6-3 Minnesota win. We improved to 41-65. and 65. All right, we have made some uh, deals, contract extensions here with some players who had contracts that were going to expire at the end of this season, much like Will Myers, but we were able to get something done with these guys a little bit more reasonably than we could have with Will Myers. First off, starting pitcher Kyle Gibson agreed to a two-year $13 million deal. Left fielder Eddie Rosario this might end up being a really good still for us, a two-year $3.7 million deal. Relief pitcher Chasen Shreve, a two-year $5.2 million deal. He has been fantastic this year for us. Jose De Leon, this might be a still as well, a three-year $6 million deal. And his potential is still an A, even though he's had a little bit of a down season this year. All right, down on the farm at Double A Chattanooga, we are facing the Tennessee Smokies from Main Street Field. In uh, wherever Tennessee, the Tennessee Smokies are located. I failed to look that up, guys. I'm sorry. But I don't know. I don't know what city the Tennessee Smokies play in. Nashville, maybe? Who knows? Definitely not Chattanooga. I'll tell you that. Because we're from Chattanooga. This is Sean Reed Foley. He's going to make the start for us. A 3.72 ERA in 58 innings. A 1.29 whip with 63 strikeouts on 21 walks at the AA level. Alex Sanabia will go for the Tennessee Smokies. 
They are. Uh, he is seven and six, a three point oh four ERA, one hundred strikeouts to twenty three walks, a very good strikeout to walk ratio for Sanabia. We go to the second inning here as Ben Turner, a two fifty five hitter with three home runs on the Double A season, facing Sean Reed Foley. We picked up Reed Foley in a trade with the Toronto Blue Jays uh, back in season number two, I believe it was. Here is Devon Fader. With the bases loaded and two outs in the third inning, and Sean Reed Foley gets Devon Fader to swing and miss for the final out of the inning, leaving the bases stranded full of Smokies. And there's no score as we go to the fourth inning. Right fielder Daniel Palka batting 250, no home runs, four RBIs. Just sent down, I believe, from AAA Rochester, and he's going to line this one down the third base line. That's going to drive in a run. And he's going to end up at second with an RBI double. Chattanooga jumps out to a one to nothing lead on Daniel Palka's RBI. Lookouts leading the Smokies here as we go to the fifth. Champ Stewart. Batting 253 with a runner on first and two outs. And Champ Stewart is going to swing through a fastball that's down and away. And another strikeout for Sean Reed Foley at the end of the fifth. It's still one to nothing. Lookouts with the lead. We go to the sixth inning now. This is Anduri Acevedo making his 13th appearance at the AA level for Tennessee. He will face Andrew Tolles with one out and nobody on. And Andrew Tolles lines it into center field. Charging is Guillen. And Guillen makes the diving play for Tennessee. And at the end of the lookouts, half of the sixth, it is still one to nothing. We go to the bottom of the inning. Stephen Bruno facing Sean Reed Foley with nobody on and nobody out. And Stephen Bruno can't catch up to that breaking ball. Sean Reed Foley drops the hammer on him. And now here is Devon Fader again, the right fielder, 249. 2-2 two -two count. And a high fastball gets Fader to chase. Another strikeout for Sean Reed Foley. And he would finish the day with 13 strikeouts. A huge game. He was carving them up. Trey Cabbage now with runners on second and third. On a 2-0 count, Cabbage goes the opposite way to left center field. That ball is back deep, and it is carrying and gone. And that is a three-run blast for Trey Cabbage. And the lookouts jump out to a 4-0 lead. That'll be the end of the day for Sabat... Uh, Sabaria, or whatever his name was. Man, I can't remember his name. The starting pitcher, Sanabia, I think. That's what it was, Sanabia. Here is Herman Dilevsky, the catcher. And Dilevsky is going to take the new Smokies pitcher deep in his first pitch. Sixth pitch, sorry. He retired one batter before Dilevsky came to the plate. And Skolina gets taken yard by Backup catcher Herman Dilevsky making the start today. The lookouts go on to win this one 6 to nothing. Trey Cabbage was 2 for 4 with the home run. And 3 RBIs. Lewin Diaz added a home run as well as Herman Dilevsky for the lookout. Sean Reed Foley goes 6 inning, gives up 4 hits. 13 strikeouts, no earned runs, and 1 walk on the day for Sean Reed Foley. A very good outing for starting pitcher. All right, game number 107, Brent Honeywell facing Felix Jorge. And it's the rubber match of this three-game series, and the Twins win it 4-2. to two. Shortstop Robert Jones went 1-4, for four, including his first Major League home run in a 4-2 Twins victory. The Royals lead the season series 9-7. to seven. We're still alive and could take that series. And that'll do it for this episode of Twins Franchise. It's uh, Minnesota Twins Franchise on the Moldy Cheese Baseball Network.